Jerusalem has been in the news again lately. You see, the United States government, along with a few other countries, have made the controversial claim that Jerusalem is the capital of the Jewish nation of Israel. With this rather, um, to us, innocuous claim, but to the world, it is it has inflamed everyone. It has set them on edge. You know, how, how dare they? And that we are going to move our embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. The rather tense detente between Muslims and Christians is even further down the hill. And why is that? I mean, we're just talking about semantics, you know, naming this, naming that. And to us, in our ears, it, it's not a big deal, but this is the city where mosque, synagogue, and Christian congregation literally sit on top of one another. A mosque has been built on top of the ancient temple ruins. And Every group in that city claims to be the rightful heirs chosen by God to claim this city as their own. Each can produce sacred scriptures to point to and say, see, it's right here from God. Now, there are some Christians that are really, you know, strongly opinionated theologically about what should be happening in the Middle East politically. But I'm going to take a guess here that most of us in this room, along with most Lutherans, are kind of like, eh, you know, it's, really, it's just really not on our radar, you know? It's like, okay, it's not really concerned for me. I can see it is for other people, but, you know. Well, the only reason that I'm bringing up in the first place isn't so that, you know, I might rally support for one group over another. Come on, you people. No, the, this part of the world has been at odds with each other for thousands and thousands of years, and there are no signs that it's going to be any different anytime soon. And I can tell you why. It's pretty obvious. Because any solution or proposed peace involves political power and military might, which always leaves winners and losers. And in any system, in any part of the country, no matter where you are, if there are oppressed people, they will always rise up and bring justice for themselves. So, yeah, that's just the way that part of the world is going to be. And, and yet, why do I bring it up? It's so that huh, we might actually see what our place is on the world stage. And what is our claim to Jerusalem, if anything? And what is our plan for hope and peace for the entire world? Pretty big stuff on the last day of 2017. You might be thinking it's cold when we're we done. No, no, we got some big things to talk about because God has big plans for Jerusalem. Just listen again to Isaiah the prophet. He says, oh, I'm not keeping silent. For Zion's sake, I'm not shutting up until you hear about Jerusalem's vindication. Oh yeah, it will shine out like the dawn. It's salvation like a blazing torch. Yes, the nations will see your vindication, Jerusalem, and all kings your glory. So big stuff's coming. But when? These words were written about the time that, well, Jerusalem was going to be invaded and ransacked by the Babylonians. That's 586 years before the birth of Jesus. The temple would be destroyed. The people would be carried off into exile. So would these words of Isaiah, which would be very fresh in everyone's mind, would they be fulfilled then in the 70 years after the exile when people finally got to come back to their homeland and, and in the subsequent years the temple rebuilt? Or perhaps it was a little bit later when King Herod rebuilt the temple even more grand and glorious with massive, huge, beautiful stones. Well, if, 
if that were the case, if this was the final vindication and victory of Jerusalem, it was rather short-lived. Because about 70 years after the birth of Jesus, the Romans came in, burned it to the ground. The whole city, the temple was destroyed. The people were dispersed throughout the world. There was no longer any nation of Israel. And the city, the capital city, was done. There would not be a homeland for the Jewish people until after World War II. That's 1948. So, is now the time? When all the nations are gathered at the UN, right? Huh? And, and now will they see the vindication of Jerusalem and all people, the kings, its glory? Well, depends on who you have answer that question. If you're a Jewish citizen living in modern day Jerusalem, the answer would be yes, a thousand times yes. But if you're anyone else, say an, an Arab Muslim, an Arab Christian living in Jerusalem, or for that matter, anyone, a, a Hindu in India or a Buddhist in China, a, an atheist in Europe, basically anybody who's not Jewish but a Gentile, well, we all kind of get left out of this scenario because the answer is based on political power and military might where there are a few select winners and the rest of us are losers. No, the answer to the vindication of Jerusalem isn't found there, it's, but it is found. There is an answer, but you have to look at the temple in Jerusalem on a specific day. It was the day when Joseph and Mary brought the infant Jesus to that temple. You see, any answer that, that does not include Jesus in the vindication and consolation of all people, it, it won't be a lasting peace because it's based upon the wrong things. Here is where God's salvation and peace for the world is found in the Savior, the Messiah. And as we, we zoom in on the details, we find that there's a man there by the name of Simeon. Long before John the Baptist would prepare the way for Jesus, standing out by the Jordan River, saying, one more powerful than I is coming, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He is the very Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Before there was John, it was Simeon, preparing the way for us to know that this is the one. That to look at this child, even as an infant, you see God's salvation that he has prepared for all people, not just the Jews, but for all generations and all nations. And that all of the, the prophets and their predictions and promises are fulfilled in the life, the death, and the resurrection of this child, Jesus. And speaking of prophets, let's not forget Anna who was there, a prophetess who then as a second witness, confirming what Simeon says, for the witness of two is valid, that Jesus is the one to redeem Jerusalem. What does that mean, redeem Jerusalem? It means that this city will finally fulfill its God-given purpose in history, which is to be the physical location where God will take the sins of the entire world and atone, forgive, and release us from our guilt. For there outside the city, it is for all people that the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up for all nations. All people. For it is here that Jesus brings his grace, his peace. Not through a political process, not through military might, but through his own death on the cross just outside the city walls of Jerusalem. And there, with the sacrifice of this one man for all the people on the earth, now there is no longer any need for a temple and animal sacrifices. There's no longer any need for a holy land and a possession of it. And here's why. Because God himself has made a nation for himself. 
a people for himself out of all tribes and languages on the earth, out of all of those who follow his son Jesus in faith and love. It is here that the words of Paul come to life for us, that at the set time, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into your hearts. And there by the spirit, you cry out, Abba, Father. And because you are no longer a slave, but God's child, you, God has made you also an heir. An heir? What's your inheritance? What are you an heir of? Of all the promises that God gave to Abraham to have a land, a people, a name, to have a God. Everything that was given to Abraham's people is given to you in Christ Jesus. Do you see why we have a place then on the world stage? Because of what we have received, we have true peace through Jesus to offer. A true life that will not end but goes on to eternity. Forgiveness of all sins. We have this. Does it make sense now why Rick and Christina are off in a foreign country making friends with Hindu college students? Because Christ offers peace through that witness. His spirit comes through those words so that their spirit can cry out, Abba, Father. Does it make sense why Pastor Mike took two teams to Tanzania, baptized thousands of people who are now learning the faith? It's the reason that we went to Brazil to build a daycare in a favela and support Holy Trinity Institute or orphanage. It's the reason that well, we helped Pratt restart their congregation, so now there's an Ascension Lutheran there in Pratt. It's the reason that plans are being made for expansion of our maple ministry and renovations of Tyler. It's because we don't have just this private faith in your heart. We have a public proclamation because we have seen the salvation of our God. A light of revelation for the Gentiles and the glory of the people Israel. Speaking of Israel, we haven't answered that question. Do we have any claim on Jerusalem? You and I sitting right in this room? No, of course not. Do we have a claim on the new Jerusalem? Oh yeah. Because the King Jesus, that's his city and we're his people. Listen to what it will be like when King Jesus returns as our judge and what he brings. It's recorded for us in Revelation 21. For it says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. Then I saw the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven prepared like a bride dressed beautifully for her husband. I heard a voice from the throne say, Now the dwelling place of God will be with his people and they will be his people and God will be their God. There will be no more mourning or pain. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. The old order of things has passed away. This is the Jerusalem where true peace will be found that will not end. This is our message for the world. This is the light for revelation to all those in the world. It's the glory of the people Israel because he's their Messiah. Did you ever figure it out? We worship the Jewish Messiah. We worship their God. He's our God. Because of Jesus. That's our message to the world. Amen. I invite you to stand as we confess.